The third mistake in moral mathematics, ignoring small chances. Return now to those prisoners' dilemmas that involve very many people. It is often claimed that in these cases, we cannot appeal to the consequences of our acts. This involves at least two more mistakes. One concerns those cases where each altruistic act has an extremely small chance of producing some extremely great benefit. It is sometimes claimed that below some threshold, extremely small chances have no rational or moral significance. This mistake is often made in discussions of elections. Though an election is not a pure prisoner's dilemma, it can illustrate this mistake. Many writers claim that in a nationwide election, one cannot justify voting merely by appealing to the consequences of one's acts. But this is often false. Suppose that if I vote, this will involve some costs and will bring no benefits apart from the possible benefit on who wins the election. On these assumptions, my voting cannot be justified in self-interested terms, but it can often be justified in consequentialist terms. When I cannot predict the effects of my act, C tells me to do whatever would produce the greatest expected benefit. The expected benefit of my act is the possible benefit multiplied by the chance that my act will produce it. I may be able to justify my voting by appealing to this benefit. Consider a presidential election in the United States. If I vote, there may be a very small chance that my vote will make a difference. On one estimate, if I am voting in one of the large and marginal states, which might go either way, the chance that I shall make a difference would be about one in a hundred million. The estimate is difficult. It should not be assumed that any pattern of votes is as likely as any other. But several writers agree that this chance is about one in a hundred million. Call the two candidates superior and inferior. And suppose that if the next president is superior, this will, on average, benefit Americans. There will be some Americans who will lose. It would have been better for these Americans if inferior had won. But the losses to these Americans, the rich minority, will be outweighed by the benefits to all the other Americans. This is why Superior is the better candidate. If he is the one who was elected, this will produce a greater total net sum of benefits minus burdens. The average net benefit to Americans is this total sum divided by the number of Americans. For simplicity, I ignore the effects on non-Americans. If my vote has a chance of one in a hundred million of affecting the result, the expected benefit of my voting is as shown. The average net benefit to Americans from Superior's election divided by a hundred million multiplied by the integer, the integer the number of Americans, minus the cost to me and others of my voting. Since there are 200 million Americans, this sum is likely to be positive. This will be so if Superior's election would, on average, bring to Americans a net benefit more than half as great as the costs of my voting. I must be pretty cynical to doubt this. Similar remarks apply to many other public goods and to altruists as well as consequentialists. If an altruist does not ignore very small 
chances. He will often have a moral reason to make a contribution. The expected benefit that he would give to others would be greater than the costs of his con contribution. It may be objected that it is irrational to consider very tiny chances. When our acts cannot affect more than a few people, this may be so. But this is because the stakes are here comparatively low. Consider the risks of causing accidental death. It may be irrational to give any thought to a one in a million chance of killing one person. But if I was a nuclear engineer, would I be irrational to give any thought to the same chance of killing a million people? This is not what most of us believe. We believe, rightly, that such chances ought to be considered. Suppose that nuclear engineers did ignore all chances at or below the thresholds of one in a million. It might then be the case that for each of the many components in a nuclear reactor, there is a one in a million chance that in any day, this component would fail in a way that would cause a catastrophe. It would be clearly wrong for those who design reactors to ignore such tiny chances. If there are many reactors, each with many such components, it would not take many days before the one in a million risk had been run a million times. There would fairly soon be a catastrophe. When the stakes are very high, no chance, however small, should be ignored. The same is true when each chance will be taken very many times. In both these kinds of case, each tiny chance should be taken to be just what it is and included in the calculation of the expected benefit. We can usually ignore a very small chance, but we should not do so when we may affect a very large number of people or when the chance will be taken a very large number of times. These large numbers roughly cancel out the smallness of the chance. A similar point applies if an act is likely or certain to give to others very small benefits. We should not ignore such benefits when they would go to a very large number of people. This large number roughly cancels out the smallness of the benefits. The total sum of benefits may thus be large. These two points are not equally plausible. Very small benefits may be imperceptible, and it is plausible to claim that an imperceptible benefit is not a benefit. But it is not plausible to claim that a very small chance is not a chance.